good afternoon everyone. Many thanks and big congratulations to Reality Plus uh, for organizing this event and putting together an illustrious panel. Truly humbled and honored to be here. Uh, well, the theme for our discussion today is NCR market evolving sales and marketing trends. Uh, well, if you reflect on the last 24 to 48 months, clearly we've seen a bull run happening. And I'm not talking about the capital markets. This bull run, if you see, has affected the sales velocity, new project launches, price escalations, and also moderated on uh, the inventory overhang. It's interesting to, so, you know, I was talking to one of the developers, it's interesting to note, uh, the measure of success for any new project launch has changed over the period of time. Earlier, new project launches were uh, judged faces the number of quarters it took to sell. Then it reduced to months, then it reduced to weeks, and now it's days. Right? So we live in interesting times. So the way we segmented this uh, discussion today is three parts. One, we'll, we'll reflect on what are the key factors propelling this growth. Second, NCR has been played as a trust deficit market. So how have brands been able to deliver on the brand promise and experience? And the last part is your thoughts on uh, the way, what are the key trends to look out for? So, Ashish, I'll start with you. Having been associated with one of the youngest and fastest growing developers in the NCR market, what are your views on the factors driving this growth in the last uh, two to three years? The last uh, two to three years, we've seen some tremendous growth. As you said, both price and volumes have gone through the roof. Parameters have changed. Uh, we've experienced that first time. And we were lucky to be born in that uh, last uh, Three years. Uh, what can I say? Uh, it won't be better. Something specific you like me to focus on? Yeah. So, so uh, if you could shed some light on what product segments have fared better in terms of plotted developments, low rise, high rise, any particular micro markets which have done better than the other. So one, uh, when we come to micro markets, I believe Gurgaon uh, is no longer can be called as you know one market Gurgaon. Gurgaon has multiple micro markets, each has its own demand, it has its own uh, dynamics. Luckily, you know, New Gurgaon has tried, uh, then uh, kind of action moved to Dwarka Expressway. Today, uh, so very much like stock market, you can say that as you have, you know, uh, you have an infrastructure theme and you have a finance theme, Gurgaon interest of buyer has been moving from micro market to micro market and all of them are actually going. There is not one single market that this is doing good. Yes, the buyer uh, interest group is different for different markets. For the Arca Expressway, we see a uh, bulk of our buyers coming from Delhi. So that's an inward migration of upgrade of customer happening from Dwarka and West Delhi into a Gurgaon lifestyle. For new Gurgaon, we see our bulk of our buyer is a first time home buyer who is able to you know get into the threshold of that ticket price and enters as his first home. Extension Road and Golf Coast Roads are all upgrade and lifestyle upgrade stories. It's not their first home, it's their probably second and third home. They're moving from a three bedroom into a four or a premium into a luxury. So there are different themes which are driving different markets. In terms of ticket size, uh, would you agree that the luxury segment is doing better than the big market? Anything priced for 5 CR? I feel that that was true. Uh, you know, why we can all say that, okay, we can generalize to say, you know, market is doing well. Uh, that maybe was the case three months, a quarter or two quarters ago. Today, as we go forward, market is getting selective. Uh, so, at a certain price, uh, you know, uh, everything was fine. As prices have moved up, customer is getting choosy. Customer is, uh, you know, th there are a lot of options. In every segment today, the, the, with the number of launches that have taken place, there are enough options customer has and customer is getting choosy. So, it's not going to be a lifting, you know, kind of tight lift all boats kind of scenario. Uh, you will see some projects struggling going forward. Uh, that has started to happen. We can see that uh, in some of the markets. Uh, it's not a slowdown, it's competition. So, talking about competition, I'll move to Sri. Since you've seen the luxury segment up so close, and congratulations on the Central Delhi launch, right? Uh, 
there's a lot of interest in the luxury segment, a lot of developers coming, you know, driving down even to this hotel. I could see a lot of billboards, votings on 5 CR above. What's your view on this segment? Uh, what has really propelled growth and who are these buyers? Are there real buyers? Are these investors? Are these end users? Are these NRIs? Who are these people? And what's the, what's the trigger for their purchase? Suddenly, why are they purchasing? What, what's the interest in luxury segment? You know, all the people who are coming from the vicinity, it is not that we are getting people from Gurgaon to our Delhi project. It is not even people from South Delhi buying into a Central West Delhi. It is very specific to that particular market. That is properly the growth. And any new development which comes across, which actually answers the complete uh, look and feel for that particular customer, really answers it. So if you are close to the workplace, if you're getting a better amenities, if you're getting the lux feel into this, we are looking at a high end, so Tark has a concert service, which is a major trigger point for getting these guys, right? Everything is taken care of, they are pampered to the hilt, right? And that is what we need to move, right, to a luxury segment. Our price point for Central West Delhi is 8 crore and 10 crores, right? And we had a phase 1 sold out at 1500 crores in a short period of time. We just launched it on 15th of January, right? So it's a good segment. A Gurgaon project, on the other hand, again is a micro market of Gurgaon. Though Delhi buyers are coming across from that, right? A lot of NRIs are for Gurgaon, but not for a Delhi market so much, right? So that really varies. And if you have a better product and people see value in that, they definitely move across. And as for the end consumer versus investors concerned, that ratio will always remain. Investors are there in the beginning of the project, but ultimately it is the end consumer who actually makes the mark. Right, so we have close to around 60 to 70% end consumers. Wow. Uh, one of the trends I was reading on the uh, NRI segment was for many developers, uh, not too many, but yeah, uh, for some of the developers, the NRI is contributing almost 20 to 25% of their sales. Would you agree to that even for a luxury segment? Absolutely. We have 26% to be more exact, right, from our NCR uh, base. And this actually takes care of the Gurgaon project. 26% sales coming from yeah. NRI? Yes. Wow. And what markets are these? Are these spread across or is it the GCC market which is contributing the maximum? Definitely market? UAE is there, but you also have from London, you also have from US, you have certain pockets within US which is really looking at it. Canada is a market that is coming out. So it's all across the globe. Interesting. Uh, I'll move to Dr. Ashish Paul. Uh, Ashish Ji, you talk about hero reality being in the affordable luxury segment. You believe in the affordable luxury uh, segment. What is, and I believe you focus on the first time home buyers. What does it take to reach to these home buyers? And what is the purchase trigger for them to <coughs> enter into the segment now? Uh, thank you. First and foremost, I think you know we've taken a conscious decision to move away from <coughs> Start the world that, uh, that we will be associated with, uh, you know, the far better players who occupy that space in a, in a far better way than, than we ever can. Our mandate is entirely different, and as you mentioned, you know, we are we are not a real estate company at all, and uh, neither do we want to be a real estate company at all. And we don't want anything to do with real estate company. We we completely disassociate with whatever happens in real estate. The way real estate is managed as an enterprise, as an industry, we, we, we do not, uh, we, uh, let me not say uh, agree, but we don't see a fitment. We, we don't belong there. The way do we belong? We belong to the consumers. We serve the consumers. And what kind of consumers do we serve? We, we serve a very discriminating consumer, a consumer who is a first time home buyer. And that's what our legacy is go back in time and know who we are. That's where does it come from? How do we do business? Where does it come from? We are the people who change the way people drive. We are the we are the people who put India on the map of Excel. Uh, before 47 or before 50, India was just known as a country with cheap labor, cheap manufacturing. We put India on the map of Excel. We would uh, I still remember you know uh, 
back in time, our distributors would say uh, the bike would give you 40, 50, when actually consumers would come back and say, no, it gives 70 and more. And you know, even after 20 year uh, uh, usage, half kick maro bike start. So we are that kind of a company, and that is how we want to do business, and which is where it does not, we don't have a mandate. We don't, I'm not servant to a target. I don't want to do 10,000 crores this year and 20,000 crores next year. I just want to deliver a good product that serves my brand. Internally, we, we, we don't sell to investors. We completely discourage investors. And if we have to sell to the investors, not more than one, that, that is the mandate. That's not my mandate. That's how we, we believe that the organization runs. And when we do that, then the entire ecosystem serves that. So we don't deal in cash at all. Not even a single thing. So, you know, my sales team under no, there is no discussion. You don't come back and tell me, you know, there is a customer who has a bag full of money. We don't encourage those discussions at all. You know, that's out of the question. Because go back and we deal only to the first home buyer. Now, who's the first home buyer? He's either coming in from, you know, tier two, tier three, either from a ghetto or a property for a major community. He looks for, you know, value for his money. Uh, he doesn't have cash. He doesn't have cash. He's probably going to bank road and all of that in white. And therefore, we give him that. And in doing so, what is the single largest expense? It is your operating expenditure. And even in your OPEX, the highest expenditure will be will be occupied by calling yourself luxury this, luxury that, by swimming pool this, bigger thing, yours, and the infinity is this, and the infinity is that, and the tides, and all of that. And it all goes out of the window. You know, ultimately, housing is the single largest investment that anybody ever makes. And as an Indian, I think all of us will probably resonate with that. I do, when you set out to work, uh, uh, more so, you know, I, I belong to uh, uh, Kashmir and, you know, if all of you perhaps would have seen Kashmir Files now. So, you know, when I came out, the first mandate was to find a home. And I think all Indians, it is their biggest KRA in life is Mujia Pele so we are that kind of company and, and therefore we identify projects which will have an end user. It's no longer Kirumai Dala and at the end of it, I do a one day sale. We, we have done those I, I, and I personally, you know, there has to be a professional stand and there has to be a personal stand. I don't agree with that. You know, and that is what is, I think, the plateaus that you will see that everybody in the morning I was part of the other session I was hearing that. The plateaus come only because of that. Because there is no end consumer. There is that Lal Rumal, Haryana, Rodriguez, Wala, EF, Mary Seeker. But who is eventually going to... I choose to be a company where, you know, instead of that Rumal, I don't see a consumer there. Right. Interesting. Karun, uh, so we were discussing backstage, right? We were discussing on the micro-market trends. And uh, one of the interesting things that I read about is that Noida seems to be picking up more traction compared to the Kurgao uh, market. In terms of the launches, in terms of the ticket size, your thoughts? Thanks. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's Kemo. I am transitioning out of BPTP as we speak right now. So the views that I express here are not necessarily subscribed to my BPTP. They are more my individual views as part of my understanding of the industry. Now that out of the way, uh, I've been associated with BPTP as well as DLF in the past. And DLF for about three years. Uh, so there is a little bit of market understanding that you get at least in the NCR market. And I think to your question specifically, I would go back to where Ashish left it, which is that when you when you compare Gurgaon and Noida, uh, you know, Gurgaon itself has multiple micro markets, as does Noida have multiple micro markets. Right? So it's it's unfair to look at the as as, as both these markets as being homogeneous or being monolithic. Right? Now there are parts of Gurgaon which obviously have slowed down in terms of consumption and there are parts of Burgaon which are now starting to see some kind of an inventory overhang. Yet there are other parts of Burgaon where the consumption is still is still at parity with demand or perhaps uh, a little short than demand. So that is one scenario. The other scenario is a Noida. Now Noida again there is the expressway, there is the uh, greater Noida area. In the past Noida traditionally has, I, I, I would go on to say, suffered uh, for a lot of developers not being able to complete and hand over projects. So there has been a fundamental trust deficit, uh, deficit in that market for 
in the last five to seven ten years. Few developers uh, have have done well and have continued to kind of uh, put their head to, to the ground and, and deliver, which is very encouraging. Overall, if you were to look at from a very macro real estate market sentiment point of view, Noida outstrips Gurgaon when it comes to infrastructure. Gurgaon's infrastructure has continued to be a laggard, and it unfortunately continues to play up a, uh, a catch up game. Uh, the administration and the authorities in Gurgaon continue to react to the requirements of the market rather than proactively plan. Noida has not done that. Noida, over a period of time, has actually solved and resolved the infrastructure piece very, very beautifully. But Gurgaon traditionally has had the advantage of uh, the airport. And Gurgaon are traditionally approximated to the airport. And Gurgaon traditionally has had the advantage of a whole lot of uh, Fortune 500 companies and the large corporate uh, establishments being based out of, of, of Gurgaon. Largely in the DLF areas, but but even otherwise. Noida therefore did not have that. Now with the Noida airport coming in, in Jaywar when that comes in, and a lot of, uh, can I say, commercial activity moving to Noida, and that's, well, if, you, if you look at the last two to three quarters, you will realize that a lot of commercial office spaces have started getting taken up in Noida as a market. If commercial offices start taking place in a particular micro market, it is a lead indicator for what will happen to residential as you go along, right? So if you can see the movement of commercial happening there for reasons of infrastructure development, etc., etc., if Gurgaon does not get its act together, there will always be a possibility of Gurgaon falling a victim or falling behind in that race to, to, to Noida. So it's an interesting comparison, but I will just say this: that there is no one Noida market and there is no one Gurgaon market. There are parts of Noida which are micro markets which respond differently to parts of Gurgaon which are micro markets and respond differently. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for sharing your perspective. Before we move to go ahead for the commercial segment, I, I have a question for you. You sit at the other side of the table, right? Uh, from a marketing perspective, how do you see things having evolved? You know, traditionally, real estate me kya hota we would roll out newspaper ads, the radio jingles, etc. Uh, do you see the role of digital marketing evolving in this segment, especially in the NCR market? Thanks. So, uh, so frankly, uh, NCR as a market has been serving direct consumers the least, uh, to be very honest, on the marketing front. Right? The, the value proposition is investment. But if you look at the West and the South, uh, have significantly moved uh, direct customer communication, acquisition, direct channel. Uh, but what is happening in the north is uh, eventually investors are also consumers. And one of the days that you can uh, attract your investors directly to channel partner or directly to audience. So what they have realized is that they have started adopting digital for brand building, uh, which is a very positive shift. So when there is uh, holdings and newspaper plant, they also have the Called roadblocks on all the media platforms because they know the combination of that is what's important. Uh, they have also kind of realized that the channel partners themselves are using digital quite aggressively, and hence the focus on creating digital assets have also moved because eventually they have to serve their channel partner with those assets. Uh, so to answer your question, what is happening is the digital shift is for sure happening, uh, more so on the branding side of things for NCR. But if you look at the volumes, the number of people directly searching for homes in NCR is also moving 30% year on year, which means the direct consumers are also on digital. Uh, and hence, the direct market is going to gradually improve over a period of years. It's also going to go to digital. Uh, so while the current probably ratio remains 20, 80, right? 20, 25% offline and another 70, 75% online, in the online space, the branding proportion is much higher right now, which will eventually shift more performance-led uh, mechanism. From the developer's perspective, and from the channel partner's perspective, it is still performance-led. And from a marketing budget perspective, right, uh, and this is what we were discussing backstage, uh, you and I have done extensive work in West, so we have that reference. Uh, how do you see the budgets allocated to marketing uh, in the NCR versus, versus the Western markets? Western markets have we moved 90% of their budgets to digital, right? Um, and uh, they have adopted not only digital as a marketing tool, but also as a customer delight journey. So, 
things like personalized communication through videos, AI being applied there, marketing automation, all of that has moved leaps and bounds in the West. Uh, if we talk about people using Salesforce automation a lot, uh, uh, they didn't really feel for us uh, before that people are going to use uh, marketing automation in real estate, but they have adopted those, those things. Uh, versus an NCR, like I mentioned, since uh, it's more branding led right now, uh, so uh, the spends are you know, probably 60% on digital versus West is, is very, very high. In fact, in West, even the smallest of the developer having just one project with 80 odd units would plan his digital calendar very in advance. Uh, will have 50% of his budgets planned towards digital. So the whole, the whole uh, rollout is digital first. Thanks. So, uh, boy, coming to you, uh, how has the trend been for the commercial business segment? Uh, we've been reading a lot about business picking up, uh, especially uh, participation of GCCs, Flexi. Would you like to throw some light on this? Uh, in terms of the business segment, what has really contributed to the success? And who are these customers who are going in for the end product? Thanks, Ishak. Uh, thank you, Real Plus, for uh, having me here. Uh, really good to hear the perspectives from a uh, fellow panelist. I learned a lot while actually tracking the business. So, what is happening currently in the commercial real estate is not something which uh, was envisioned in a, uh, in a, in a sh shorter past or uh, it has just happened this year. It's been building up for quite four or five years. There have been a lot of uh, good initiatives by the by the government, which enabled investments. India became liquidated uh, to uh, for all of, for most of these offshore companies who established their packet offices as as well as their uh, GCCs in India. So that was all building up for quite a few years, and then came pandemic where uh, plans were not cancelled, but they were put on hold for some time. There were also a lot of other micro factors that were uh, happening at the same time. Uh, companies wouldn't have digitized uh, themselves that rapidly had it not been pandemic. That's the flip side of it. So people built the entire uh, digital ecosystem. And uh, they put now in, when you look at that being the macro environment and what has happened uh, in the commercial real estate, you'll see GGCs is coming to India and use it now. It's a huge number. In fact, they, have, uh, they will be tripling up from the 2023 pace by 2025. There's no other category that's jumping in. Data centers are being opened. Every other uh, developer is looking at uh, land bank power supply and the stable land bank to develop data centers. They look also got into that. And so are all, all the developers. Where, where I think suddenly it became a, became a big thing when there was pandemic and it's coming and to do so. But that's how the shopping trends have moved. Commercial office space requirement in t and t towns will always, always be there. But that's exactly where the business model picks up. But yes, the Donatia 3D4 towns are also picking up that. But everybody is migrating. The way people have uh, looked at hybrid and you know looked at that make, make a part of the life, it did had an impact. Now, of commercial office spaces, not just office spaces, there are more of integrated office spaces. We don't go to uh, work for nine to six at, at a place. We actually go and spend that time in making that workplace a part of your uh, how to say your social cycle. Person, so you interact, you learn, you collaborate. I mean, that's the way. The office segment is picking up. So all those uh, categories, all those industries where collaboration was the key, and not just manufacturing, that started picking up. Service sector started picking up. The reason why there's so much of positive energy and positive vibes on the flexi operators in India, because that's one segment which caters to this thing of, of a company who's supposed to expand, but they don't know what horizon they will expand. They will look, get the same uh, grade A office space, maybe not through direct to developers directly, but will go through the flexi operators. And this is what is happening. And so, uh, the confidence of people coming back to office, working in a safe and secure environment, and then come back uh, not just work tired but also refreshed and they've learned something new. Something again that's uh, that's something that most of these places have really contributed. To. And I see a really good positive out uh, out outlook uh, in even in the days to come. And. Uh, would you also throw some light on what's the category next, what's the tenant legs uh, within this uh, demand that is coming through? Demand is fueled by GCCs. Uh, 
the flexi operator is also having a good, uh, good, uh, how to say, good financial times, good uh, overall stability in this entire business. And, uh, also, data centers is something which is as a category started uh, on, on its own last four years, and that's been picking up. But I would say, if you look at the overall demand, uh, about 80-85 percent is fueled by GCCs, and we still not uh, out as a category ready to welcome all of them in one go. If actually everybody looks at that plan and, and start the operations from India, we'll have a how to say a supply shortage. And that's why developers are also looking at that. They're looking at upgrading their assets to great, uh, great office spaces. They're looking at building uh, buildings which are uh, which are uh, compliant from green norms. Uh, buildings that are that can offer integrated working and all of that. So, uh, uh, yes, GCC is the fuel, but there are other factors also that are getting to the overall bottom line. Interesting. I'll move to the next segment. Uh, on delivering the brand promise experience. So, Sunit, I'll start with you. You know, uh, I often see this in a trust deficit market, uh, especially in NCR. How do you build a brand? And especially a brand in the luxury segment, uh, what goes behind that? Right now, we have not really delivered any particular project. Though our next project, Tripodura is getting uh, delivered in March. Though the Rena deadline is 2026. Now that is a big promise in itself. If you actually deliver a project, that to a very high-end luxury project, a year in advance, then a Rena deadline. So that gives a very, very important credence to the trust value. And again, the second thing is the customer relationship management. The more you engage with them, especially your existing customers who have already bought. So this project is actually 80 to 90 percent sold out, right? How you interact with them and the focus is completely on engagement. You meet them often, you post them often, you let them experience your product much before it's delivered through a clubhouse or various amenities. That goes a long way. And I think it's just communication. Just be in touch constantly, consistently, not in a big lags. That's what really matters. You know, often uh, from my experience, what I've seen is uh, in the time the booking happens, the experience is right out there. Booking ke baad, jaise aage gaadi hai, it becomes a very transactional relationship. <laughs> Sir, man, paisa jay. And anytime the customer needs something from the developer, Suddenly, the developer is not reaching. Ashish ji, your thoughts on this? Uh, I know we spoke on this, and uh, there are some interesting initiatives Smart World has taken to engage these customers. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll quickly mention two. Uh, as Sunit said, uh, we are a believer in uh, you know. Yes, we interact digitally. Uh, you know, all that is hygiene. You know, construction updates and all of that will go. Uh, that's to just. Keep him, you know, that everything is fine and things are good. But uh, we like to meet the customer, we like to engage him, and it's a practice with all of our projects that we call over the customer. So we uh, will organize large events, uh, preferably at the sites where we call the customer to the uh, event where uh, it's a fun event, it's a family day. More than that, it is to tell customer we are here, we are calling you, and we call all of our customers together. So there is no hiding away from the customer, there is no challenge in which the customers are interacting with each other. We like to you know, to, uh, you to know your neighbor beforehand and that goes a long way in building the trust because we are calling them to the sites and having them saying, we to aapko hai, please have a look. Another initiative that Smartful took, uh, for example our uh, customer service, we have a customer service department and we also have a 15,000 square feet customer service lounge. This is equivalent or better than any airport lounge or the Emirates or the uh, you know uh, equivalent lounge. We run F and B uh, twelve hours a day. Any customer, like you know, if you go to a friend, what what does it happen? You have to eat something. You know, have a meal with. Me. We insist anybody visiting us should spend some time sit with us. You know, not only have a cup of coffee, but please have your meal here with us. These centers also work like a co-working at times for visiting guests. He's coming to Gurgaon, please use our office. We have meeting rooms, call over your meeting and have it here at my garage. You know, so that openness to say, come over. Okay, like, and we call it, you know, we uh, we like to be seen as a young and a friendly brand. And we put that into practice saying, come over. You know, so it's, it's 180 degrees of saying, you know, increased digital uh, focus. But we've seen, uh, you know, ultimately we are in a broken motor uh, business and uh, 
when he's putting that trust into you, uh, meeting once in a while goes a long way. The old fashioned technique, but it works brilliantly. Uh, I love it how he said how digital home conveyancer, uh, in my view, in NCR, digitizing the customer journey from booking to possession is still not a high team. It is not, and uh, you know, as our friend said, I think uh, we are five years behind the uh, West. Western part of our country has taken uh, you know lead on that, and uh, I believe because NCR the whole game uh, you know was trust deficit, and as long as you were building, it was enough. You know, it's only now that you have five developers who are building, so you okay, you are now competing on, or you know you try and get better and better on different parameters. Uh, look at the business five years ago; uh, all that customer was ask, asking was banana dena. You know, and uh, brands who would, uh, you know, claim that I will make it, was it, you know, they are the leading brands. So, uh, yeah, now that you have, you know, uh, the shake up has happened and you have 10 brands and, you know, customer leads are to make it, uh, that those 8 have to now compute to different parameters. I think it's a very important parameter. Uh, you will see it catching up to West and I think in the next two years. Wonderful. Look forward to see So, Dr. Ashish Kaur, uh, question for you. Following the customer journey, do you believe brands would be able to monetize this in terms of referral and loyalty business? Because, uh, sorry, so because when I compare the Western market with, with NCR, I see a lot of developers driving 20 to 30 percent of their sales uh, by just servicing their existing customers. Vis a vis, if I see the North market, the construct is very different, largely we are HR part oriented. Uh, your thoughts on this? Oh, absolutely, I think the biggest chunk that we are, the biggest piece that we are missing in this business and, and unfortunately that happens to set the course of this business which is we have based this business on a channel partner. The problem <coughs> is we never talk about the consumer and therefore uh, consumer journey, consumer insights is merely a bunch of work. It, it, it's not really because you, you build your business on investors whether it is from the GCC or from anywhere else and therefore you know that there will be a cycle of plateau that will be sooner than later right and you're already while you're starting your first project you're already prepared that there will be a plateau four to five years uh, ahead that is that only happens because you've not factored in the consumer experience anywhere it is it is no longer you never create a product based on what a consumer wants and therefore you always you're playing to the market and when you're playing to the market you're already you have your purpose you're forced to react to what is happening around you. This, you know, today you will see a project at 6 crores, in the morning you will see another project at 8 crores. You're reacting and you're compelled to do that. What it is doing is it is at every stage, it is increasing the cost of doing business. Because you're only expanding the sales, you're not expanding consumption. Any business which is not based on consumption will have a cyclic problem. That is one. Two. You, the basic premise of this business is Banao, Hejo, Bago. These are the three Ds that, that that is the core of this business. Because at the end of the end of the year, you know, at the fourth year, it will be an RW that will take care of it. So, which is why now go back and see the. This is the reflection that you see in the in the approach that we have to the customer. Those fancy ads and the jackets and this and the. For us, we know it is creating a fancy, uh, let's say, that experiential center. And as you rightly said, you know, look at the biggest brand, but the problem is when you need some level there. And I think we can't shy away from that because that is how we face the business. And right from the top, and I'm, I'm reminded of the conversation when I was choosing between other high paying jobs and, and you know, why I chose you, that tells you how we do business and uh, SKM. He said, Ashish, you know, I want to build a business where the customer will have a problem. This is, this is the problem. This is uh, a very difficult thing. But I want to create a business remember for you, my three days, where a customer is talking to you, think that it is me talking to you because he thinks he is talking to you. So it is a Sunil Khan who is And that is how we face the business face up. So it is, it is not a consumer. I am always talking to my chairman because, because the consumer thinks that it is true. We have an internal target, it's a part of the process, not a part of the marketing plan. If there's a dead 
आज जो है दस हजार करोड़ की बात कर रहा है अगर सभी लोग छोड़ के बाहर में लग जाते तो ये इंडस्ट्री बंद हो जाती सो यस नो देर आर बैड एपल्स इन एवरी इंडस्ट्री दोज बैड एपल्स नीड टू बी टेकन टू टास्क एंड वी नीड टू बी केयरफुल एज अ इंडस्ट्री बॉडी आई थिंक रेरा स्पीड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रूल बाय कमिंग टू दैट सिनेरियो टू रेगुलेट द इंडस्ट्री एंड टू गेट रिड ऑफ द बैड एपल्स एज कंज्यूमर्स आल्सो वी मेक दोस चॉइसेस आर यू टेलिंग मी दैट समबडी इन कोविड वन हु वाजंट श्योर अबाउट वेदर ही इज गोना हैव अ जॉब आफ्टर कोविड और व्हाट हैपेंड इन कोविड कोविड वन नोबडी न्यू व्हाट वाज हैपनिंग they were still investing money in projects right which is the most expensive ticket value that you 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 come across so if you can get the trust piece right if you can get people to interact engage with you through sales galleries through engagements and through events i don't think i don't think it's it's, it's such a big mess right it's it's the owners of the good real estate developers to ensure that the bad ones are called out now and clear and the good ones continue to set new benchmarks in the industry that how they go on so from commercial uh, uh, segment perspective are there any metrics like a nps or a csat that you monitor and are there any tools technologies data that you use to enhance the experience correct that with uh, every market how is the physical product talk about it residential or commercial real estate so, but the budget product is physical and, and these are customers who are with you for a longer term we don't go nine years it's not about uh, agree with current it's not about apne aaj bechha and you escape i mean there are customers who who will grow with you who will expand with you they will expand with you for one city or another city they will expand with you in their portfolio because they will consolidate in tougher time they consolidate in uh, good time they will expand more with you to start with, uh, to start with these are commercial real estate Why your customer is the biggest task at the moment, and if that is done right, forty fifty percent of marketing is done. Uh, drawing an entire customer life uh, life cycle journey was something which was not heard of uh, in this category. At least not by developers. My fellow fellows from IPCs were really really bright and sharp and great, and all the tools uh, at the disposal to do it. But as uh, marketers, we have started doing the last three or four years. We are not digitizing the customer life cycle. getting tools to understand them better right uh, not just when they are selling to you but for the time they express their interest to uh, to look for an office space so the entire gestation period of uh, then we evaluating multiple uh, uh, sets uh, with their ipc partners to the time they freeze on one and then you know capturing for that time when they sign with us so the entire next few years of uh, the entire uh, lease, lease service now we try to digitize all of that understand and leverage those learnings for to improve our processes as well as also look at the teams who are also service oriented to the practice it's no longer a landlord tenant kind of a relationship it's customer oriented and that's one big shift that has happened in the last four years time so yes we are uh, we, we get into nps we get, get into customer feedback surveys we get into uh, understanding the pulse of customers what kind of amenity or in office spaces they need what is the exact thing in a transaction which possibly they are not happy with while they are doing it so right from softer issues to commercial issues to all of that and it's a constant journey of uh, you know reading that recalibrating ourselves correcting our correcting where things are not gone wrong have gone wrong and then maybe if there's something has gone right build further on it to improve and yes we are using uh, uh, about half a dozen tools to enable us So right from uh, HubSpot to CSV, all that is being used. But again, uh, it's not just the tools and the data that it will throw back at you. What do you do with it? It's what do you do with it? Yeah. You know, uh, so obviously uh, the customer satisfaction is more than the public level. I've only seen one developer publish it, and any time I'm talking to my clients and I ask them for their CSV NPS, so all of them say, "Hundred, we are hundred or hundred." How do you measure it? So I am the maker, I am the checker. So that's not the right approach. So that's very. So coming back to you, uh, from a marketing perspective, how do developers leverage marketing automation uh, to deliver personalization at scale? So, so as everyone said, uh, CRM is is a process 
plus communication, plus feedback. You right? You do it offline, you do it online. Uh, that's just a medium of communication. Uh, but eventually, it has to be what you want to communicate. And marketing automation today has given us um, a, a more uh, proactive way of reaching to people, uh, make data segments, and communicate effectively, which generally you can miss if you're doing it offline. Uh, so that way it has become quite effective and has become very very personalized. So uh, talking about Brigade in South, uh, we recently did a project with them where they handed over uh, the project and the MD made a video and that was then circulated to uh, 3000 customers of them personalized with name. So you know, uh, hi man, I'm glad that you booked a, a 3 BHK with us and we are happy to hand over the possession now. Uh, it's a very simple thing, but it's, it's so much personalized, right? You would never imagine the MD of a developer coming to you, sending a personalized WhatsApp with a video. That, that uplifts the engagement with the customer to the next level. Uh, so, so these small things can be very effective uh, if, if you use the personalization and marketing automation in the right sense. Uh, uh, I mean, to, to uh, talk about the offline process, uh, I recently booked a, a commercial office space uh, in, in, in West in Mumbai and uh, I was an investor there and at the time of possession they made me fill a form where they said that we have a dedicated two member team now who would help you rent this out uh, and they made me fill what is the expectation, expected rent, uh, are you willing to furnish it, not furnish it, what's the time frame you are looking at, are you willing for a three year rental horizon, I mean that that gives me a sense that he remembers that I am an investor and he's willing to kind of ensure that I get the return, right? So now this can be done digitally, this can be done offline, but the intent is what will, will drive this here. So great, great perspective, and perhaps uh, in the interest of time. So uh, I'll move to the last segment, which is around uh, what are your thoughts on the next 24 to 48 months? What are your key priorities? How do you see the market evolving in terms of ticket size, buyer interest, NRI segment, all of that we spoke about? Ashish, you will start with. Uh, I think uh, one word, uh, we have used a lot of optimism uh, about what is ahead of us for the next 24 months. And when we talk about NRI market, I like you to you know focus on uh, why suddenly all parts of world NRI firing, why are they buying? Because we at times are uh, focusing always on, we are looking for, oh it's been a bull run last three years, is it going to stop? I think NRI is looking at data. NRI is looking at GDP growth, is looking at when this kind of growth happens over a sustained period of time, what happens to that country. You know, we still, I think we need to go back and look at that to answer what will happen to our, us in the next uh, 5 to 10 years. I think if we are growing at 8% a year, next 10 years, you know, anybody holding a physical asset, the asset prices are going to be going through the roof. So it's, not, it's not a rocket science, it's true and anybody. So that realization, I think NRI has got it first, we are still stuck in Burgaon and that is very bad. That two years will be fine, you won't come back and buy it <laughs> at this price again. So I think uh, we approach uh, the market with a huge amount of optimism. I think uh, we have some really good times ahead of us. But yes, it does not mean reckless buy. You know, just as you, you know, having a good highway does not mean you will see the speed limit. Uh, so what happens is, yes, uh, this sector is always prone to exuberance, you know. Uh, so if something is doing well, we push it to the limit and take it, you know, to a point where it kind of... Uh, so yes, we can, you know, uh, I think a, a year or two, uh, you know, when, as the luxury sector was doing well, everybody stretched the sizes to the next level. And, uh, you know, again, uh, you have to hear, listen to the consumer. Uh, consumer is asking for something in four crores, you are... Uh, Hellbent on manufacturing 7 crore homes, so you you call in. Yeah. I think as long as you have your ears down to the ground and uh, yes, it's good to be aspirational, but uh, build what market is uh, you know asking for. I don't see an issue in demand for next five years. Dr. Ashish, do you share the same optimism? Yes, in, in, in a way, yes, but I think uh, the. One important thing I think we are all, uh, if we do not change the way this business should be done, which is going back to the drawing board and creating, uh, I, I will just take 30 more seconds, uh, you know, uh, the DLF, I, I think whenever I think of uh, the Delhi NCR hardcore Delhi market, I think the last innovation that happened was because of DLF, which was the export and food export. I remember a long time back when they came in an area which was heavily dominated by the bungalow culture and 
people said, are you out of your mind and this is the price point nobody's going to buy it. It came, it changed the entire market scenario today. Now, how many of us go back to the drawing board and create a product based on a consumer uh, insight? We don't do that. If we don't realize that, we are already presiding over the last rights. It's just that we don't know it uh, as yet. Uh, customer journeys, of course, will help us improve and, you know, people like Mike, we do fantastic work with you, with me, with Mike. Uh, incredible work that people like Mike are doing and more of that because there is technology now available, of course, at Mason State, which, which does. But still, it is post-sale scenario that drives most of it, which is why you will see post-purchase dissonances also exceptionally high, exceptionally high. You won't see that anywhere, especially the price point of sale. So create products based on consumer insights that will keep you in the business for a very, very long time. Drive referral businesses. I mean, the units are very small in comparison to a traditional FMCG company is just selling a few hundred units. How difficult could it be? But we don't because there is always that time. We are already planning. Jaksa Le, Vice Aiga, Vichy Aiga. We have already, we have been presenting over the last night which we don't accept that. Karan, your views, what what do you expect uh, the next three to four years to be? Will the sizes of the apartments shrink? Will it continue? Will this price hike continue? See, price hikes will uh, will play out in the demand and supply kind of manner. Yeah, there's already a report that uh, Magic Bricks released a couple of weeks ago on the affordability index of real estate. For those of you who haven't read that, you should read that. It's an interesting report. I'm not the spokesperson, but I got that report in my hands, and it's a good one to just show how the price increases are moving. Uh, but I think the important part is. Uh, there is a fairly, fairly bright future, at least in the next five to seven years down the line. There are new urban markets that are getting created. There are new markets getting habited by the government itself. Uh, the entire focus is on deep existing, existing towns. So new towns are coming up. And with new towns and a uh, higher degree of urbanization, you will have a greater opportunity for you to invest in real estate as an asset class. Right? Now when you look at all asset classes within real estate, I'm not the resident in real estate here, not commercial. Uh, your plots have been delivering some of the best returns that you've been seeing in the last five to seven years. Uh, offers you the best opportunity for customization and building from scratch. Low-rise houses or low-rise houses are starting to do very well because A, the efficiency of construction through the built-up carpet area is much, much higher there. So you have more, more value for the money that you're spending on the property. Also, it leads to a greater degree of privacy. If you look at group housing and high-rises, the sheer convenience Safety, security, shared amenities that you get there. Uh, those opportunities are fabulous. And all families, especially young families, when I'm saying family, young families, I'm saying family with young kids, families with elder parents, want that kind of an environment for the kids to play around with adequate amount of security, for the elderly to walk around, sit down in the common areas without, you know, so, so all these asset classes are here to stay. I think it's a great degree of possibility. Uh, and we should all believe in that positivity. Yes, I will say what everybody else has also said. There is, in, in any business, whether, it, whether you're selling a pack of chips or biscuits or real estate, you cannot yeah. under deliver. You need to exceed expectations. And while exceeding expectations, you have to, have to, have to be a trustworthy person. If you cannot earn trust, then you have no reason to be in business at all. Real estate or any other industry. Often people are saying ki price hai, hai, buyer hai, buyer hai, buyer hai. Next two, three years, do you anticipate this trend to continue, especially in the luxury segment? In fact, I'll say it's not only next two, three years, it's going to continue for five to seven years, as the other panelists also said. The market is quite robust, right? Um, how much an offtake? Luxury has moved up a little as compared to an affordable segment. People are looking at that and actually it largely will depend on after sales. It is not really pre-sales and how you lure that customer and how you do a smart marketing and how you sell by creating a beautiful galleries. But what your after sales is, right? That is going to be the key changer which is going to really decide because a lot of cross-selling and upselling happens. So luckily for the brand talk, I can talk about a lot of people have bought Tukundra, they have bought Kelasa, and they have now bought Ishwa, right? So a lot of people in that segment, that percentage is increasing, day by day. But as Mohit rightly said, it's very important to know your customer, what do they want, 
right? If they really want a high segment, I think we can deliver on that. So there is a